So Don, when we look at something like executive compensation through an ethical lens, what, what new dimensions should come into focus? What kinds of ethical principles or standards should we apply to help us understand this issue? Great question, Dan. Uh, ethical lens, actually, there's quite a few uh, different perspectives or lenses that you can take a look at executive compensation. Social contract comes to mind, and social contract is the idea that within society the corporation has some responsibilities in exchange for, say, limited liability, perpetual duration, um, that the corporation gives jobs, products and services that we need, pays taxes, kind of notion of corporate citizenship there. So to the extent that um, we have a good society, often, uh, at least throughout the 20th century, we believed it was because we had good corporations producing good things and services and providing jobs and paying taxes. There has been, uh, over the last 30 years, a tendency for corporations to outsource the jobs, to lay people off, to squeeze the pay of middle-level or lower-level employees, um, and to avoid taxes. Uh, Apple's an example where they're paying uh, almost no California taxes because through lawyering and accounting they've managed to situate themselves at least partly in Nevada. Uh, so they don't have to pay the eight and a half percent to California. And yet they're very proud of their California, made in Cupertino. So there's a disconnect there between the benefits going to society and the benefits to the corporation. And insofar as this is a social contract issue, we'd say that uh, the corporation is not being uh, living up to um, its part of the deal. Um, but this is much discussed publicly. There's an interesting uh, perspective as well uh, from utilitarianism. And many companies get this wrong. They believe that if they're doing the best for the company, they're automatically doing the best for society. This isn't necessarily true. The best for Ford Motor Company may or may not be the greatest good for society. We saw in the Ford Pinto case, we have to make this 2,000 pound, no more than a $2,000 Ford Pinto. And when you say, this is what we're going to do and this is what we're going to make, you can easily overlook uh, the, the sense of the good for the entire um, society. So again, utilitarianism is about the greatest good for society, not just the company. So we may hire an executive to create value for the company, but we're not necessarily creating value for the greater society. In terms of virtue ethics, um, some things came up this morning. I think we were talking about this earlier, Dan. When you look at uh, Jamie Dimon and the recent loss of $2 billion from trading done by the whale in London, or is it five billion? Or I think I saw a figure this morning, maybe nine billion? Jamie Dimon, I believe, has said that he will not take as big a bonus or any bonus. And if he hasn't said that, he probably should from the perspective of virtue ethics. Um, the virtuous CEO would not take a job at such a high rate of pay that he would or she would disrupt the corporate culture and the sense of trust and belongingness in a certain organization. They would say, no, you know, I don't want that. Uh, I want us to be together. I want the ratios to be more fair. I want everybody to think that we're all on board. I don't want to be that much above everybody else. I'm in this for the good of the company. That would be very virtuous. So that when Diamond says, I can't take a bonus under these circumstances, I'm responsible and I'm gonna take responsibility. I'm not just gonna say I'm responsible. I'm gonna give back to the company because I have hurt the company by failing to supervise the whale in London. We could also talk about deontology as another lens. Uh, what universal rule would apply for executive compensation? You might say something like, an executive should be compensated in proportion to the benefit that he or she creates for the company, but also um, in terms of any kind of clawback or punishment or take back by the corporation from the compensation that the, uh, the executive should also be punished or uh, uh, corrected to the extent of the harm that they do. So we'll talk about clawbacks later, but there's a lot of different perspectives that bear on this issue. And it's no, no surprise that 
it gets a lot of press. Um, Speaking of press, what about the Milton Friedman argument from the early 70s that the role of the CEO is to deliver profit to the shareholders and only that? We always use that reading um, in our very first course in Daniels College of Business and we always grapple with that and we bring in John Mackey and other perspectives um, to give a larger uh, framework for all of this. I would say in terms of utility and utilitarianism, first of all, he is just talking about the good of the company. He makes no pretense to be talking that the corporation should be creating good for society. I believe he assumes that it will because he says that you would obey the law, you maximize profits within the law and consistent with ethical custom. So in 1970 or 71, whenever it was, corporations were paying more taxes, they were employing more people, they weren't outsourcing. He may just have assumed that corporations do good for society, particularly in the sense that they focus on their core competencies and do what they should do, as opposed to making philanthropic gifts or getting into areas where they have no competence. And that makes sense. But he's not really talking about the social contract generally or the utility uh, specifically toward society of maximizing shareholder value. 